the coast is still unclear over the restoration of operations of the micro blogging site Twitter in Nigeria. This is despite a ruling by the ECOWAS courts in Abuja, which restrained the federal government from suspending or sanctioning Twitter or its um, uh, users in the country. The Minister of Information and Culture, Alaji Lai Mohamed, insisted for Twitter and other social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook to continue to operate in the country. They must register as a company, open offices and employ Nigerians. From the face of it, when you look at the suspension and um, we submitted ourselves to the jurisdiction of ECOWAS courts. I don't know. Maybe it was because of the Juson strike that um, these people took that this case. I think it was Femi Falano. Yeah. Sarah, uh, Sarah. Sarah no, took the case to the ECOWAS court. The court. And um, we submitted ourselves to the jurisdiction, but we hardly obey judgments from this <laughs> court. Oh, you're the one saying government doesn't obey judgments. So. We hardly. I have <laughs> on ensemble <laughs> dance. Don't mind me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> you know, but, see, you know, they call it precedent. Yeah, we have precedent yeah, that shows um, that. Look, again, I'm not a lawyer, but you know, law involves a lot of technicalities. Mm. Uh, I think that what Serap and uh, 176 uh, other Nigerians did, I guess they belong. All members of civil society did was to. Um, Force the hand of government not to act immediately, and you know you, you can't just um, you know um, embark on 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 the demonstration, trusting that things will work out in your favor. So they went quickly went to court to preempt government and mm -hmm. got that judgment. But government has argued its case, you know, um, and they lost. So we expect that the Nigerian government, notorious as it is, as as they are, you know, uh, in terms of not to be. Uh, others of the court would behave differently in the, in this matter. Um, we don't have any reason to 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 conclude that they will act otherwise, mm -hmm. because government you know uh, says they have set up, they picked you know an A team to present them in a conversation that will hold probably very soon with with the team from Twitter. So we would like to see how that plays out. But even as we wait. We need, the government needs to understand that there is a business side to this, to this, um, to this face off. And I'd like to share you know, some important facts with you. Um, the report says that the cost of shutdown, a report by NetBlocks, okay, says the, the cost of shutdown per day is almost 100 million, 100 million naira. You know what that means. This, this platform had been shut down, and Nigerians have been forced not to use it 40 million in, in the last yeah for the, in in the last two or two weeks or thereabout. So a lot is is um, we are losing a lot in terms of the economic side of it, and that is why whatever government needs to do, we need to act very quickly mm -hmm. and 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 deal with the matter. They come in support of the um, federal government of Nigeria, and um, the president set up a committee yeah. led by. Minister of Information, Honorable uh, uh, Lai Lai Mohamed. And in that committee, we have uh, the Minister of um, Digital Economy and Communications, there, right. that um, Issa Patani. In that same committee, we have uh, Babatunde Raji Fashola. And he's there on the strength that he's a lawyer, a senior mm -hmm. advocate of Nigeria. We have Festus Kuyamo, a senior advocate of Nigeria, is a lawyer. And, uh, we That's have Minister of State for, yes, for, for Labour. Um, Labour. Yeah. And we have Geoffrey Oyema, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And this will, and um, Abubakar Malami, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice. And this will definitely, when you look at the names. But right, almost all of them are lawyers. No, no, no. As in the, <laughs> yes, the rationale. You know? But some Nigerians, again, they've gone ahead to bring that, oh, these are. They're not too techy people. That Twitter might just want to bring people from their own committee of um, young men and women that are <laughs> savvy in terms no, of. I think, I think th those are the top of the deck. Mm. The information, the communication that I read says, in addition to other people, mm. meaning that um, resource people that they would need, mm. you know. So they've done well with this committee. Will, will be drafted, yes. Okay. You know, because. 
Uh, we are looking at external affairs, so you have somebody there. Mm. Uh, no, we are sir. looking at uh, information and culture. Yes, sir. Like my has been at the vanguard of this. And then, of course, this is new, new tech, new econo economy, mm. so we are this dealing with Pasami is there, mm. you know. And, um, well, maybe people might say, well, okay, this generates employment, so you have the Minister of State for... No, it's also a senior advocate of... Yeah, yeah. I, I'm saying, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to look at the portfolios okay. of this pers this, these individuals. Now, uh, having said this, uh, I'm going to say something that I think it's time for these online platforms to start having street addresses in Nigeria. Um, federal government a huge junk, chunk of his revenue is company income tax. And if these organizations are not quite registered in Nigeria, that's a big omission, I think. So I, without prejudice to Twitter or WhatsApp or anybody, I just think that anybody who is going to register, w operate in one way or the other in Nigeria ought to be properly registered with the CAC. Mm -hmm. And then there should be, you get your name, and then we have to find a way to remit your tax to the board so of inland. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you know. And then if you have to have a street address, the presence meaning that you have to have a physical address on ground here. I don't think I, think, I don't think it's too much to ask for. And the federal government went ahead. After all, in their countries where they are, they have street addresses. Hmm. The federal government is very concerned that any company any micro blogging site that want to undermine democracy that's the way they are looking at it that look they are going to be they, are, they will make sure that they proscribe that company irrespective of the uh the rights that we're talking about our freedom of the press that this is national security and when it comes to national security every other right take the back seat yes um but let me, let me just quickly correct an error when I, you know, that uh, error of facts. When I talked about 100 million naira, it's what we're losing per hour. So I need to correct that. Not per, per hour? Yeah, per hour. So I need to correct that. Hmm. I, I would agree with you that no country will submit itself to anarchy. It's not done anywhere. Every hmm. sovereign nation has a right to run its, its, its entity, okay, in a way that people are safe, all right, and uh, citizens make progress. Within the confines, you know, within the confines of the law, so here yeah, uh, we appreciate government concerns that it shouldn't, you know, subject itself to um, uh, corporate, corporate organizations that have almost become like uh, multinationals operating beyond op operating beyond their borders. You, you, we are not running a system. I mean, where you could just walk in, do whatever you like, and walk away. So I would, I would agree that some form of um, relationship needs yeah, need to, need to be defined clearly. But there is this other side of the concern, and it's a major concern for me, even as a media practitioner, that the government is acting, acting out of panic, is jittery. I've argued that in the past, and I want to maintain that position. I think that the government had all the time in the world well, to strike, to strike a relationship. We are, uh, we'll be, uh, we are yeah. under regulation. This, yeah. like TBC now. Yes. We are under NBC. We can step out of the so line. You, so you, <laughs> that so sector is heavily regulated. So you wonder why the government wants to continue to tweak the law that sets up. I mean, that sets up uh, uh, NBC. That's so, that about social media. Can't the social media be regulated? You, you see, I. Uh, In Canada, there's a move I, like I that. I'm going I've argued here that. No country will want to subject itself to a reign of anarchy. I, yeah. I mean, that, I need uh, to make myself Sam, clear yeah, that, in that yeah. regard. Sam, I, I, I want to, sorry, I'm yes. sorry to, I just want to okay. add this. That, you see, by the time the DSO, the digital switchover, yes. fully takes over, TV stations will be vacating a lot of their frequencies. Okay. Mm. And, it's going, be, and it's going space. to be taken over mm. by telecoms that service these Twitters, this uh, WhatsApp, and the rest of them. You see, we cannot just leave that without some kind of, uh, how do you put it? Regulation. Some, some kind of regulation. Yeah. And also, to like I said, I need to add that 
there must be we must be able to make some money out of that i i think it's an I, asset no no mm -hmm. I, I totally agree with you okay i totally agree with you but what we're also saying is that do we trust this government not to take on the advantage of what he wants to do mm -hmm. okay to create some kind of undeserving I, I understand for you. people to to we have to move to some to I understand news you. and share news criticizing the government sh should not be seen as undermining yeah, <laughs> that's that's security. That. Yeah, that's not security. So, it's a mixed bag. Yeah. It's not, some people should not say, oh, because somebody is saying that, oh, President Worry, you've not done well. That should not then in any way endanger national security. Right. But we move. It's an ongoing discussion and um, we will we'll stay on it till the end of this crisis between the federal government and Twitter.